Uh, uh, well, welcome to all, and it is a great, a great pleasure inviting you to be part of this panel. And uh, we are more appropriate times, and we just, we have just uh, a, a kind of a feeling of recovery from uh, the pandemic, which devastated uh, everybody's life. I mean. No one, no one was prepared to face this kind of uh, uh, onslaught. I mean, I know the, the, the societies, economies, the people, government, everybody. The pandemic has not uh, touched everyone and uh, it's, it's in the process of leaving, I mean, hopefully. And uh, uh, this, is a, this is a great time and it's appropriate time to uh, explore and discuss. So the pandemic has left a, a big question. I mean, what failed us? I mean, there's... What failed us? I mean, everybody was under the assumption that, okay, the world is uh, going on a smooth track. Uh, but when the pandemic hit us uh, hard and uh, everybody started uh, questioning what failed us. And finally, the, the assessment and analysis is that the current systems. So uh, the, the current processes has failed us. And there, there are uh, uh, complete chaos across the world in, the, in, in, in terms of... Uh, uh, the governments fail, failing to reach the, uh, the the victims and the businesses failing to reach their customers and customers uh, uh, failing to reach their, uh, their suppliers. So there were the complete chaos uh, across the globe. And uh, this, this, this has left uh, so many uh, questions to be answered. So... Uh, so everybody is uh, looking at a kind of uh, so what could be the new technologies which can uh, really uh, solve this uh, some of the problems the world face so the blockchain is one of the technologies which is uh, uh, fast being adopted and uh, obviously the critic says is the the blockchain is a solution looking for a problem so <laughs> <laughs> so so the problems, we, so we need to define a problem statement and throw it uh, to the blockchain to solve it. So we are in the interesting times and uh, in this context and the background, I want the panel to uh, uh, give their thoughts on uh, how uh, the, the blockchain can refuel uh, the growth across the economies and businesses and how it can change the lives of the people. So uh, this is the broad theme. I would uh, 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 welcome to panel, uh, Soren. <laughs> I think uh, <coughs> it's good to have you back. Thank you. So, I've been, uh, just, uh, so I, I would uh, like to start with uh, Toby on his a kind of an experience. Uh, uh, Toby, what what thoughts in 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 terms of uh, 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 the blockchain creating a kind of a, a, a security uh, among the users in the sense of whether it could be uh, your uh, alternate uh, currencies or CBDCs or stable coins. So, so do you do you, do you think uh, the blockchain a platform as a platform can help? People to have that kind of uh, the trust to bring back because uh, the, and the, during the pandemics, the financial system the, there was a there was a breakdown in financial uh, flows and the people struggled to get their monies in their hands. So, so what are your thoughts in in terms of uh, blockchain helping in creating a kind of a, a trust and transparency in the people uh, in the in the minds of users? Well, thank you, and, and and thank everyone for being here today. I'm, I'm really excited to have this conversation with with my panel colleagues and and those who are attending. I, I think this is such a great question because let's not forget where blo when blockchain showed up, or not blockchain, but but crypto. Um, it was Satoshi Nakamoto right after one year after the economic collapse, right in 2008. And so I think blockchain is uncomfortable for people because it does solve it is a solution to a problem that some of us don't want to solve or don't want to fix and i think that's the the, the biggest piece i think the, the 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 biggest challenge for blockchain right now is not necessarily the movement forward of the technology that's going to happen where you know we have skilled people 
um, building new technologies every single day. I think that what has to outpace the growth of the technology for blockchain and the application of it is the consciousness of the users, the collective consciousness of the communities and the governments and the individual consciousness of the individual's users. And I mean investors and I mean entrepreneurs, I mean content creators and and consumers eventually. Um, I think that has to be the piece that we have to focus on. And, and you know, blockchain offers the promise of creating a better world, not only in the digital sense, but um, using the digital world to create a better physical or real world. So I think that's, that's the work that, that I'm trying to bring about. And I think the way that you do that is creating a society that holds good actor communities, not only um, develops them, but leverages their talents and their collective effort and impact to create positive and sustainable outcomes. And I think that we see that right now with what's going on, not only post the pandemic, but particularly with um, the Russia-Ukraine situation, look how quickly crypto was mobilized to solve problems. Um, that is, that is um, and to move money to where money was being blocked by our traditional trusted third-party systems. Um, that is highly disruptive, and that is a really good reason that we're not looking for a solution <laughs> to the problem. <laughs> and I just need to say that. So I think that's that's my answer, if, I, if, that, if I can offer that. Okay, wonderful. Maybe probably uh, since you, you are working on uh, a, a, a pharma, you worked on some of those pharma-related healthcare, rather. So I'm sure, I mean... Uh, so, in fact, I, I have my own experience to share here is that uh, the blockchain is really helped uh, creating the health records. I and mean, in fact, uh, I'm taking a real time example of uh, how India has used blockchain creating the, the kind of health records of the citizens. So it is uh, almost uh, 1.4 billion uh, records, which is a mammoth task by itself. So, uh, 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 as we uh, said in our opening uh, remarks, and uh, the pandemic has, uh, has, has, has thrown a lot of opportunities for economies and uh, the businesses. One of the biggest opportunity uh, given to the Indian government is to create a kind of uh, healthcare systems because we, the, the, the country did not have a proper healthcare record so far. So the post-pandemic government has invested heavily in creating a record. So, so. Uh, so it helped the government to uh, to, to prepare for uh, any of those uncertainties in future. I mean, the, uh, the pandemic is the COVID nineteen is no one is, is something which no one has really prepared. And so, so in the in that context and in the sense, uh, 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 maybe probably the privacy of uh, data is, is is one thing. Uh, would you like to share your uh, thoughts on that, Toby? Oh, for me. Yeah. Um, I think privacy, I think um, security, I think transparency, I think the balance between privacy and transparency, um, those are going to continue to be um, critical issues that are going to be negotiated and dominated by the people who either fund the blockchain or who control it. And I think the work is going to be to make sure that all of the people who are impacted by it have an equitable voice in what privacy <clears throat> and what transparency looks like and how it affects each individual group of people uniquely. So I think that there's a lot of work to be done in that area. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm secure. Pri privacy for me means nothing. <laughs> I mean, it, it just feels like my life is a open, you know, an open bottle of beer. I mean, it's not even a book. <laughs> it's just like, you know, come in and see what's, see what's left. And I think that that is, very much the case. Um, I get hacked, if you want to call it that, regularly. I get notices from my bank that I'm on the black web weekly, and it's overwhelming. And um, and I don't even think blockchain is going to solve that problem. I just I just don't. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of opportunity, <laughs> but I experience that personally. Okay, so serving liquor on blockchain is is a new concept. It's wonderful. Uh, I, I'll come to a bit uh, a bit then and. Uh, so I, I'm sure uh, I want to uh, check your thoughts on uh, using blockchain. How, how can uh, the countries or economies can bring the financial inclusion? Because, so it, it can 
uh, the bring lot of uh, uh, trust transparency and uh, so most of this uh, the developing countries or uh, underdeveloped countries the uh, the, the non the, the the majority of the population is uh, not on the banking system so uh, i want your thoughts on how the blockchain can bring the financial inclusion in those economies uh, abhinav awesome. awesome thank you thank you everyone okay um you know if if we look at the our covid-19 you know has disrupted a lot of things you know like the um you know what covid-19 pandemic um you know it brought unprecedented disruption generally um causing a short term fiscal impact and a, a, what, what i call a long term economic impact on the nations around the globe around the world so it, it also reveal uh reveal the weakness in our you know um in terms of the, the traditional way of um handling things when it comes to payment you know stuff like that however in a world where consumer behavior is constantly changing i mean changing innovation is is like the order of the day priorities and user experience are equally evolving i mean per second the demand for efficiency um uh, uh, transparency security has always been at the fore of our uh, of our expectations and but the advent of of blockchain technology has raised our expectation even higher i mean a couple of you know let me let's just think of it back maybe like 20 uh, 15 16 you know till now and uh, you know i was checking through the international data um up you know and i look at what they release a new update to is a worldwide semi annual blockchain spending guide which predicts that the, that annual global spending on blockchain solution will reach 11.7 billion by 2022 i mean this is 2022 okay which represents a five year compound annual growth rate i mean a whole five year five year for that matter compound annual growth of about 7 73.2% seven, so I can tell you that blockchain has, has features that enable it to revolutionize various sectors, you know, such as impenetrable data infrastructure, um, confidentiality, you know, just think of it transparency. And if if, if it is if it's well properly analyzed, I can tell you that blockchain technology has the potential to fuel, you know, the post pandemic growth. You know, like um, Toby has mentioned, can you imagine what? let's take crypto for example you know uh of recent when the ukrainian government announced you know taking contribution via um divine the i mean divide the normal um fiat or traditional uh, payment system using crypto you know to get support you know the the old the old, the old internet just go here wire so this these are the future you know that i, I can see that um um the area that blockchain can come in to assist to augment you know i work not just only in the blockchain i work in the dao too as well you know i, I i've been you know working with dao and um, gitcoin dao and some other dao you know in the ecosystem for for going to few years now and i could see the power of blockchain i could see the power of you know crypto defi stuff like that how they've been revolutionized how we do stuff you know so i believe I can tell you that if this world properly harnessed, you know, it has potential to fuel the post-pandemic growth. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Abir. Then that uh, that brings to the next question: uh, Can blockchain can really can can it be the voice and power of the uh, public? And uh, when it <laughs> <laughs> so when we have that question, so the first thing comes is. Uh, uh, how trust, trustable is the, the entire system? So, uh, when I mean, with, given that kind of a uh, experiences, the post-pandemic, uh, uh, the left behind us. So, the users or the users are uh, uh, either uh, very skeptical about uh, uh, using the new systems. So, so that's where the blockchain has to really stand up and say, okay, hey, look, 
this is the system you can depend upon so one of one one of the uh, 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 tools to give the power to the uh, people is having their uh, uh, to to get them identified where is that your kyc comes to comes into the play so uh, i would like to come to soren on uh, how the blockchain help in building the the kyc and uh, other kind of end users in users of the kyc for uh, uh, for economies and for the businesses and uh, uh, as an as a user how can i use my own kyc to to get benefit out of uh, blockchain uh, your thoughts on that yeah um, hey guys everybody uh thanks for tuning in uh the band people to watching uh we appreciate your uh attention before i start i want to just you know address what toby said and i love that privacy and if we have privacy or not the promise of the uh, blockchain and the uh, uh, transactions was like tra- blockchain transactions allow users to control their data through the private and public keys allowing them to own it so third party intermediaries are not allowed to misuse or obtain the data so with that said if we consider that is the promise of a blockchain uh, it comes down to how are we connecting to the blockchain are we still using the decentralized or centralized uh you know connections to the blockchain or i see uh, uh i believe abiodun just spoke about the dows or that's the consensus we are using so bottom line is after so many years been in technology uh for first time ever we have the access to our own identity but yes whatever happened before this it really doesn't matter all of our lives are open public but what can come after this is depending on how we are treating our information and the data we have and how we are sharing with the other people so it might be late for us to worry about it because we're in our you know late 30s 40s 50s but for our kids and there are grandkids and the ones which they are coming after us i think the world will be much more transparent so the goal of blockchain is maximizing efficiency transparency security and all of that comes first with the data take a look at the companies which we, they have changed the world of like the way which we are consuming right now even run the world right now we are on this platform everyone uses the data to be able to connect and some of the companies have misused the data to be able to gain the momentum and you know cut the corners so um that is the blockchain that is the literally the promise of it so now how the impactful is and what kyc will do here again why are we doing kyc uh and i will just start you know uh, we are like in our company right now we have built the kyc from the core because we thought you know what transparency is the first thing blockchain prompts everybody so what if i'm going to hide it and i'm not going to connect or communicate with the other institutions or companies or countries we would not be able to reach the goal we want it so we want to really be able to connect billions of people in a transparent way so a person is in philippines africa or in asia or south or central america they be all connected together without worrying about it like you know my identity will be identity will be compromised or someone else will misuse it for some some of their gains which they want to have kyc is uh if you go to fundamental know your customers right so which company doesn't want to know their customer which person doesn't want to know the other person who's communicating with them unless you're in a dirty business or if you're in a business which you don't want people to know who you are and what you are doing <laughs> um, i'm not against of dows i'm not against of anyone who is want to use the auto- autonomous organization to be behind of the scene that's fine we have a word which is that we all can agree with this disagree- disagreement but for me as a running a business multiple businesses in the united states in latin america i would like to know my customers and i'm sure there are millions of people they agree with this and and how if you do if you know the person if you know the interest if you align with their interests interests i think with the blockchain technology we all can create a social capitalism which everybody is talking so interests of the people will be aligned to what we are doing and not just basically my partners and my shareholders will be the ones to just you know gaining or reaping that benefit so people will be also come in so for me kyc is part of it's the data basically mining the data by allowing the people participating the data 
as much as they want it. So if they don't want to share their data to a third party, that's their choice. They may not have some of the benefits that third parties at you know advertising or providing, but they are in control. That's the whole game. So if you want to share, share it. If you don't want to share it, don't share it. And the other way around, also the company doesn't want to connect with you and doesn't want to provide your services because you're not uh, classifying yourself as a tier ones or twos or things of the KYC, you're not going to have the benefit. I just want to stop there because this conversation is too, too much and we have a lot of great points <laughs> over here and I want to you know, tap in to listen more and you know, I'll give my two cents here and there, but I'll love to listen to what Gustavo want to say, Toby and Avoid and and also you. I'm here just to bounce back. <laughs> okay, so I, I'll come back on that. KYC is a big area which 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 can affect everybody's life. Uh, so then, so even uh, from there, it it it, it throws me another uh, uh, the component of blockchain, which is the efficiency. So, so we we assume the blockchain brings in a lot of efficiency. We have seen how the economy suffered during the pandemic, and we have seen how the companies, how, how the inter- industry suffered in, in, in terms of their the production, distribution, supply chain. So there are a lot of, uh, uh, kind of uh, disruptions happen. So I would like to uh, come to Gustavo on that. So what are your thoughts on uh, uh, the, the kind of a uh, efficiency the blockchain can bring uh, in improving uh, the product uh, uh, supply and uh, tackling the supply chain disruptions, which one of those, the case in the point is that uh, during the pandemic, uh, so many of those countries have seen uh, the breakdown of supplies in the, 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 the medical equipment, the, the kind of the vaccines reaching to the, the, the end users. So I'm sure the blockchain has maybe probably a throw a solution in improving the efficiency on the supply chain, improving the efficiency on the product processes. Uh, I'm sure, Gustav, you have a lot more to share on that. Well, yes, uh, especially a lot of energy to to express how powerful this could be, okay? Uh, more than anything, actually. It's, I, I love the conversation. And, and let me start by saying apologies for being late. I had a little bit of a technical issue, and I was I was uh, afraid that I wasn't going to be here. So I'm glad I am. Uh, it was um, the the this world is changing. Okay, we all understand that, and the better we uh, we cope with that change, the better we lead and enable and instigate that change. That uh, we're going to be better off overall. And I'm talking the industry, I'm talking governments, I'm talking in every single angle of society. That 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 is an important realization that we need to embrace and take on. In the case specifically of production, a lot of technologies are there and pop every day to serve production the production system and the and the and the supply chain activities. However, adoption is still low and complicated to understand and sort out. Uh, for, for by, by many, especially leader, leaders in the in the industry, uh, how do I choose what to go for, and who to trust in this, and how to implement it, how to justify it? There's a lot of big questions that we leaders in supply chain have. In the case of blockchain specifically, I I I worry less about the confidentiality because that's what the 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 the, the technology enables that you can keep your things the way you want to keep it. And uh, uh, and I will mo- mostly celebrate the opportunity to transparently operate. <clears throat> so this level of transparency that creates a, diff- a new a new a new horizon on what is uh, the possibility of creating trust in the system, which will re- then build on improvements on productivity, acceleration of processes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is so important that if we would have done this ten years or five years back, at the time of, of the pandemic, we will have had much less of the problems to transact and operate mm-hmm. supply chains globally. Imagine that you don't have to recheck and recheck the transactions because the transactions are happening with a single source of truth that we all, all understand already and that we, are, we, are, we use and leverage to synchronize operations. This, as simple as that, this will give us an amazing, amazing opportunity for growth uh, uh, productivity 
uh, throughput, reliance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is uh, uh, that's why I believe uh, uh, very uh, passionately that embracing and moving towards it, even if I don't understand all of it, because the understanding will give us the, the ability to do better and better at, uh, as we learn, uh, at, uh, is, is, uh, is an imperative that we cannot wait no more. I mean, I can say in, in two words or three words, we were with the pants down when the, when the pandemic came. And uh, we, were, we, were, we were pants down and we could have have a much stronger response from the supply chain standpoint than we had if we would have not be in that situation. I hope I answered the question. Oh, oh wonderful. My... Yes. Uh, so again, uh, we, we, we all uh, uh, deeply involved in the blockchain uh, technologies and how the blockchain technology can solve the, the problems uh, being faced by our customers or societies and so but generally, but generally, when you speak to someone, so people get confused uh, blockchain with cryptocurrencies. So everybody says the moment uh, I have a solution on uh, blockchain, they said, okay, you are working on cryptos. So the experience is crypto across the globe is that uh, few nations are accepting it, few nations are regulating it, few nations are banning it. So, so the whole discussion throws a question uh, uh, do you want to share, like, and, uh, do you expect some regulation need to be in place in use of blockchain? So this is, uh, uh, you cannot have any uniform, uh, uh, a kind of a law across the, so each, each nation need to have its own, uh, uh, kind of a regulation to this thing. So a blanket uh, uh, ban on cryptocurrency is actually affecting the uses of blockchain. I mean, the, the moment somebody, some country bans a crypto, so people start uh, stop working on blockchain. So th there is a thin line between uh, uh, even the, unfortunately, even the, uh, the countries uh, uh, don't understand a kind of uh, the difference between cryptos and blockchain. So what are your thoughts? This is a, a, a common question to every one of you. Uh, in the sense, uh, uh, is is blockchain need to be regulated or it is need to be uh, left free to uh, people to handle it? <laughs> okay. Um, okay uh, I, I'll start with Toby. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Same order. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you're dealing with a broad global community of people coming from different lived experiences, all participating in a shared power equation that you absolutely have to have a couple of things. One, an identification of a clear articulation of a set of shared values, what we all value. Two, um, an understanding of what it means to operationalize those values from the vantage point of your own reality, your own specific reality, right? And then three, what regulate, you know, you're talking about regulations do we need to put in place, i.e. accountabilities in the ecosystem so that everybody's, um, or as much as possible, everybody's um, reality and, and, and voice counts. Now that's a big and audacious goal, but it's worthy of our ongoing commitment and iteration. And, and um, what I think history has proven is, you know, and you read books like uh, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, is that when you ignore a group of people and the consequence of you ignoring them is that you oppress them, it may take a long time, but you're going you're gonna to regret it at some point. So I, I think we can learn from our histories. Um, and I think, you know, the good thing about blockchain is, is that it was created as an alternative to the current status quo. So the people who are wanting to regulate, what I don't hear are people who are regulators explaining why they're qualified to be regulators in this new world order. I'd like to have that conversation. Uh, I, I want to add that one to what Toby just said. Uh, the, the difference between the regulation and uh, wrong regulations are all depends of the regulators. And absolutely. So if, if I had a numerous conversation, as you guys all know, with the officials of the countries and um, they want to regulate, uh, we're all for it. I, I want to regulate because I want to understand what can I do, what not. But when they are regulating by 
lack of knowledge of exactly what these tokens or utility and blockchain is, and they're putting all together in one basket? Absolutely not. So in case of, let's say, our token is a utility token, but they want to consider it as a security token. And how that possibly happened, I have no idea. Right. But it's just a lack of knowledge. So yes, we want to have regulation, but the regulators, they have to distinguish between the what is to be regulated, what not. If you're talking about the Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, uh, asset, that's asset class, that's security, we under, all understood. But you're talking about the token of a blockchain project, which is enabling the people to govern, secure, secure the, the database of the people and giving the power back to people. I don't mean that is any ways that's a security. So yes, regulation needs to be clarified what exactly need to be regulated or not, and the knowledge. And our job is to actually give our thoughts and basically support each other to have a similar voice. And you know, I, I, will, I want to be part of a DAO which gives that conversation to the governance. Create that DAO, I'll be part of it. So that will be something which is everybody will love to do. But again, back to you, I think clear exactly what the regulations are and why. And uh, you cannot, and this technology is what, 10, 12, 14 years old. We had some movements before, but, and, and, uh, and the good thing is, you know, you mentioned cur- cryptocurrencies. If the cryptocurrency was not there, probably adoption of the blockchain was not going to happen. Not going to happen. So all this speculation, all these ups and downs on the market every single day helps people to get to know this. And when you understand it deep in the core, the way which we have spent years in this technology, we understand, oh my God, with this can change people's life. With this, we can give the people the social capitalism, which everybody all around the world were hoping for and dreaming for. Um, that's my two cents. Uh, yeah, I would do. Yeah, <laughs> I would just like to share. <laughs> I think think of the reason where uh, the digital technologies is hot. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I would just like to, you know, the, 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 the idea of having an environment where regulations are um, reactive from events or wrongdoing or whatever, or based on fear. To uh, then, then, then we are lost already uh, because the ignorance, the fear, and the reaction doesn't help to really. It's, it's all all of those are coming from the negative energy side of things. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Uh, at the, at, at, how about creating creating a set of uh, uh, regulations and uh, uh, environment where um, stimulates the use and enhancement of the use of Mm-hmm. Uh, for the sake of prosperity, instead. In that yeah. case, you know, all re- all regulations will be uh, good to have. Well, I mean, as uh, Soren uh, mentioned, an intelligent regulation is everyone wants it. Hmm. A, a, a mindless regulation to just to show what yes, I'm I'm the I'm the I'm the guy who has your reins on my hand. So that's 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 going to affect every one of us. Correct. So, uh, Abhijit, you, you you were thoughts on uh, regulation, maybe? So uh, yeah. yeah, You know, I, I just want to share my you know, like I had experience, you know, when it comes to regulation. Like, um, you know, I'm from Nigeria, an um, interesting country, you know, beautiful country, yeah. Um, but, you know. Like, um, I feel sometimes that we need to um, educate our regulators, you know, about the things that, um, you know, when it comes to cryptocurrency, blockchain stuff, yeah, you know, um, the, the information and the rumors, you know, stuff around cryptocurrency actually, um, you know, clear the way for blockchain, you know, to for us to get to know more about, especially the the ecosystem to get to know more about um, blockchain and the capacity and what it can do. So I, I will just share my experience, you know, like why why I say that the regulators, especially, you know, government agency and the rest need to be educated. Um, we need to educate them on the importance of blockchain and not that at the mention of cryptocurrency, then they, you know, like they just want to shut everything down. 
um i've been trying to you know like uh, register a a company you know that works around them um, blockchain stuff and um education around blockchain not just for i mean non for non for profit now not for profit not just for business but basically to educate you know the especially around africa you know starting from nigeria around them um, just like the you know education around blockchain generally and um to my surprise you know something that normally takes less than you know maybe three months at most do you know that because of the lack of understanding of the importance of blockchain and convincing it with cryptocurrency um my documents get to the table of um anthony general you know that it required to the general of the of the federation to sign to approve a company non-profit just to educate so that is to see the magnitude of the ignorance you know when it comes to um mixing things up as regards cryptocurrency blockchain um, um you know so yeah, this i think is it, is very essential that um, especially in the in the business sector you know there should be way how we can come together because sometimes if the government doesn't uh really you know move forward to to take step forward to organize this kind of um um kind of symposium where we can converge and talk about how we can educate you know the ecosystem i think the in the business sector we need to come together maybe as a forum and see how we can assist the government to see you know become like a like a full light you know like a pointer to put and to educate them you know it sometimes could be very painful you know over a year i've been on this for a year you know that's my own personal experience now think of it across the globe you know same thing so um <laughs> you know I know we are getting better at this, you know, day by day, things are improving, you know, and we keep pushing, we won't give up. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, wonderful. Uh, now, let me step into uh, a, a kind of a layman's shoes and ask this question. I mean, as a consumer and as an end user, how blockchain can improve my life in, in terms of uh, the kind of an experience, uh, the on, a kind of a e-commerce experience and uh, uh, the medical technologies and the, 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 the procurement of goods and uh, services. So how how does the blockchain will improve the way I live? So uh, Toby, I will begin with you again. That's a question. I mean, I think we see some really powerful examples already during the um, the whole COVID crisis, the fact that blockchain was used to move, not only move and track and, and monitor the movement of the vaccine to to the individual and to be able to specifically track it, but also it was a blockchain that was able to, to monitor the temperature of a very, very delicate um, vaccine to make sure that, that we minimize um, bad batches. So the impact of that, particularly um, in communities of color, in you know the United States and, and around the world where the vaccine was being deployed, um, it was very clear you know that that without a blockchain interface, that was gonna you know that was, everybody was not gonna get the same treatment, everyone was gonna get the same quality of care. So I think there's a huge opportunity for blockchain and 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 quality delivery of quality of care globally, and I'm particularly excited about that for the global south, which is which is where that need is, I think, greatest. Um, I also think that the opportunity to be a part of a global community. Um, I was talking with a young person here who's um, German, and she is here doing a master's degree thesis on DAOs. And so she wanted to talk with me and yada, yada. And, and the first thing she said is, what I love about this work is that I'm out of my little town in Germany. And I'm talking to people who I would otherwise never meet. And that larger perspective for a young person is shaping not only who she's going to be, but what she's going to go after in her life. And we're, we're, we need that now. I mean, people, you know, when you look at joblessness and you look at the, um, the consequence of joblessness, um, to be able to use blockchain to connect people to new possibilities for their lives and for their work is huge. Uh, I come to Gustav on so your uh, perspective on users users to the common man. Right? 
I, I think this is, uh, as Nathaniel mentioned, is really clear. Okay, this is the contribution is exactly uh, uh, in the in the area of it's, it's a high impact when it comes to bringing products to the right place, especially when they need it in situations like, like for example, if you look at uh, every every year the malaria season in the in, in the world and how do we make sure that the, the medicines required for that treatment are in the jungle somewhere uh, at, uh, at, at the right time and not after the fact when people already, already you know, when the thing already was gone, okay? Uh, that, that, that type of things are, are, are simply gonna be uh, uh, easier for us to track and, make, and, and, and assure that they, that they happen. Uh, so it's a wonderful thing uh, for society uh, humanity that uh, that we have uh, we can tap on this type of technology that we didn't have before and uh, and that we probably have so much fear to get into uh it's, it's wonderful that it's there and it's getting on, understood better yeah, getting good. yeah yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh sorry um, uh, uh from, yeah from a consumer centric perspective blockchain technology literally has a potential to a transfer consumers relationship by enhancing data and information transparency mm -hmm. and improving privacy and security that's number one which is very very important i believe also allows the for innovative forms of consumer loyalty programs which uh, might help to create additional value in terms of monetary and as, as well as helping the creative aspect of this blockchain through the smart contracts so before smart contracts, before execution of the smart contracts, we were literally living in a dark pool of the information, which if they want to share with us or not, or in the case of, let's say, you want to buy a drug, and if that supply chain and the content is already on a blockchain, you will understand the origin, you understand the nutrition, every aspect of it, not just by trusting them. So you will take the friction out of this conversation and then trust less conversation on the blockchain so everyone understand it so if i want to buy the uh, product i will understand better product and i can just basically go there on the chain and understand where this all happening but i just mentioned be part of the uh, creators or people's journey so in a person let's say uh, we are uh, building a platform which allows the people from Philippines, if they are, uh, let's say, gamer, or Nigeria, if they're a creator, or the other one from the South America to come in and, you know, share their content, and then share their content, or raise some money, or sell an NFT, and all of those will bring the value to the consumer. So now I'm part of it. I don't have to be an angel investor. I don't have to be a VC. I can create my own investment group with a, with the people with the same kind of mindset and put them all a smart contract so there will not be any any kind of judgment or bad actors. Everything will be executed on a time mm -hmm. which matter the most and everybody will get their piece of it. So before this, we never had that. Me and you couldn't go just go, you know, with, okay, do whatever we want to do and put the NFTs and people start buying it. We couldn't create these DAOs. We couldn't create all this synergy between the social aspect of this blockchain. So now we can. And so with that, consumers are literally on the top shape over here. But again comes to them do they understand really what blockchain is offering them or basically they're sitting down and looking at the what bitcoin does every single day ups and downs or hearing it bitcoin is banned in china bitcoin is open here bitcoin is closed over there Bitcoin is over here now so uh, i think we are all and this gives us all a um, platform so no matter where we are we can all participate look at us five of us over here and many people on the chat group we are from different countries and came with the same mentality to just connect. And I, I believe that that's, that's your um, uh, aspect of the consumer, uh, in my opinion. Okay, okay. so uh, we actually completed our uh, time slot, but we, as I said, we have a liberty to extend it. The, the discussion is so in, in, uh, intense, maybe probably I'll conclude with uh, the, the, the uh, the last remark from everyone of us. So the big question is what next? Hmm. So with blockchain and uh, so so everyone in uh, this is a common uh, question to everyone. So what next and where do we see the blockchain changing the way we uh, want that to be changed? 
a quickly maybe 30 seconds for each panelist yeah uh, for me i think um blockchain is um you know right now is what we need to fully streamline the you know when it comes to trust security traceability and the rest you know like um from you know true analysis of like uh, of the top use of their blockchain run by their potential to um generate economic value expert evaluate the technology's potential to create value across industry and um you know maybe from healthcare government public service you know manufacturing finance logistics just think of it retail you know uh, and uh, and i must say because the benefit we differ from continent to continent you know so when it comes to like what next because of this point because the the benefit you know differs uh, you will see how like the the US or Europe, you know, we quickly switch into action, you know, to, to improve on stuff like that. And um, sometimes, you know, part of the Africa here, you know, trying to, you know, like, uh, is this, is it going to work? Do, can we really trust this, you know, something like that? So, um, and again, so, uh, you know, for example, the needs for manufacturing focused economies uh, such as China, we make a more monumental shift to like um, traceability, you know, while uh, like US will benefit most um, from securitization, um, payments, and, um, and and as well the identity and credential. So they would like to quickly move into action to, to make sure that they uh, improve on those things that make them to, you know. Um, um, so if we look at everything together, you know, because of the benefits, you know, differ from, you know, um, country to countries, um, continent to continent, it will determine you know what next for each you know um which is the area i believe but with our own uh pushing you know advocacy and the rest i i believe that um we can kick start you know we can ignite the night and um make things happen fast in the ecosystem thanks uh so Ray, uh, i'm just next. gonna make it very short blockchain technology will fundamentally change how we live work in the future that just that just me <laughs> a grand statement and uh, gusto uh, your uh, concluding remark on what next with blockchain i, I, I think uh, uh, i am we saw and this is uh, true uh, but I, I think uh, acceleration will be important for us globally in society really get the benefit of it so accelerating into understanding and and leveraging it it will be it will be critical to be um i think oh, oh i oh, i really can't add anything i mean i think that these are the critical points um i think that we need to organize people's intentions under a clearly defined uh preferred future one that's time bound and measurable transformative so that people aren't just on the blockchain chain seeking out um, opportunities to exploit, but they've, they've stated an accountability toward why I'm here and what it is that I want to contribute. And that, that happens through community. Well, uh, so wonderful uh, to have every one of you here and uh, we share a lot of information, maybe probably. Uh, so, we're all convinced that blockchain can give a kind of a solutions what we are looking for maybe probably uh, it may not happen overnight but yes uh, we guys all working on that and maybe probably we are one, one, one clog in the whole system to see that uh, how how can we contribute from our side to the betterment of uh, societies and uh, this thing and i thank you everyone for uh, taking time and joining this uh, wonderful session and see you soon do take care. Thank Bye you. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.